as you probably know, uh, this has begun this extravehicular activity moonwalk. Uh, earlier than had it been anticipated, uh, the astronauts didn't sleep as long as they had expected to, and they're out and around. And the first thing they've got to do is go out and fix the antenna on the ALSEP, the uh, package of instruments they've got, because Mission Control reported that the signal was weak and they'll fix it. Roy, you were just listening to Mission Control. We have a problem already with uh, Mitchell. What is that problem? Uh, Mitchell was describing some trouble with the cable in his wrist. That's the wrist of the suit, of course, as it was uh, helping uh, Alan Shepard to get out through into the hatch. Uh, we'll just have to look at carefully. Uh, they're moving through that egress, as they call it, right now. We'll hear them talking egress. What should that do to him if his... Uh, and if he can't move that wrist, so obviously he wouldn't be able to load the tools on the transporter, that little rickshaw device they have. However, they don't seem too concerned about it, so uh, I think our best bet's just to listen to it. That's right. That's Mitchell right now, saying he's coming down outside. So he's going to be sick. Okay. plan when they get on the surface, Sandy, will be that uh, Shepard will go over to work on that antenna at the central station of the scientific experiments package, while Mitchell starts to load hand tools aboard the Met or rickshaw so that they can make the big and very important traverse to Cone Crater, which has been described to us by scientists as the most important single objective of this mission. It should be pointed out that as a result of yesterday's briefing, it was confirmed that Ed Mitchell's suit we're uh, 131 hours, 56 minutes. The uh, report from Ed Mitchell on the cable on his wrist. Uh, this is a cable that holds the uh, wrist uh, glove. Uh, it's a right wrist. Uh, we uh, do not expect at this point uh, for it to inhibit his mobility uh, to any appreciable extent. Continuing... Uh, in the final phases uh, prior to uh, egress. That was John McLeod. This is Apollo Control Houston. Obviously a mission control Houston, up as we are. Um, it should be pointed out that after the uh, two astronauts returned to the uh, lunar module yesterday, the scientists reported in the change of shift briefing the Mitchell suit, the space suit, had leaked uh, more than this is oxygen leakage. Had lit, uh, lit, leaked more than Shepherd's, but uh, apparently they decided it won't okay, affect him anyway. Today's exercise. Here, uh, we really saw you hop out. Okay, Roger. Shepard, uh, now on the surface, you heard uh, him talking to Fred Hayes, uh, our Capcom uh, for this EVA, who almost made this trip himself. JJ, coming down. Hayes almost made it, because he was scheduled and flew Apollo 13, but of course didn't get back on the surface. In our television picture now, Sandy, we can see them moving. That's our live picture from the moon. That should be Shepard out first. That's right. shortly. Cameras, tools, maps.
Shepard seems very frisky for this hour, especially for a man that only had about four and a half hours of sleep. In apparently a terrible meal, he reported that he had finished the meal. Shepard said, whatever meal it was. Okay. Mitchell preparing to come down. There's the old Shepard Rickshaw. The, uh... Just from, uh, yep. Roger, Ed, uh, you're cleared to come out. The instrument that they use to carry all the, uh, very scientific, uh, experiments that they're going to do at Cone Crater. See their S band antenna, that big umbrella like thing. The uh, full cart or Matt uh, now in our picture. Shepard moving it over. And that big umbrella in the center of the picture is their S band antenna that's sending back this television picture and the voices. And just on the porch. I did. Metro reporting he's on the porch. Coming down the ladder. Coming down the ladder now. there about two and a half hours earlier than their original schedule. any sign of trouble up there. They certainly don't betray it by their statements. Well, this is as cheerful as you can possibly be at, more cheerful than you can possibly be at this hour of the morning. dawn hours for most of the United States, for all of the United States for that matter. But up there on the moon, that sun has now risen quite a few hours since they landed yesterday morning. Roy? Yes. This is Jim in New York. Right, Jim. Uh, I was just going to make a comment on that. I've been doing a little figuring. Well, a moment ago, it was either Shepard or Mitchell said, a beautiful day at Primaro, like it was another day. Of course, it's not another day. A day on the moon lasts 14 days, and then 14 days at night, Earth days. So if you figure it up, the sun has moved exactly 14 minutes. On Earth, that's the distance it would have moved, about 14 minutes. They got a little higher sun out, maybe just enough to notice. You can see that from the shadows mm -hmm. they're casting, as a matter of fact, Jim. Still, obviously, early morning shadows. If we ever figured out... Uh, since uh, cabin depressed. 
If they ever figured out how to make the moon a resort, you could go up there and get quite a suntan as a two-week vacation. <laughs> get quite a suntan and a 14-minute vacation, too. Sure could. <laughs> getting up to dig gold, but the rocks they hope to bring back should be even more valuable than gold. Rocks that uh, scientists say may be a billion years older than the rocks brought back by Apollo 11 and 12. A bit ahead of the timeline is uh, Shepard uh, Mitchell uh, loading the uh, Met. try to stay ahead of the timeline, I would think, Sandy, as they work this morning. How much time are you now? You may be put off by fixing the LSAP antenna. No. It's an easy couple of minutes, isn't it? I guess it'll take a few minutes, but uh, they've planned that and built it into their plans mm -hmm. in the morning and obviously think that they have time and plenty of it to uh, perform that task without endangering the really important move over to Cone Crater. Shepard should start moving over there shortly. That's about a 600-foot walk for him over there in a few minutes' work and a 600-foot walk back. But as we've seen their activities yesterday, uh, that's not much of a trek, apparently, on the moon. <laughs> or a jog than a walk. A jog, yeah. Back, Jim. Yeah. The third man on the flight, Stuart Ruzzo, of course, is still aboard the command uh, module, which is circling the moon. It's over on the back side now, and he's uh, going according to his and plan. And he's and just finished uh, breakfast. Ten minutes left now to uh, complete the mat mode. I get the feeling, everybody, that Alan Shepard, who is a mightily determined man, has decided to bring this one in today. Okay, on schedule. Okay, you're leaving the organic sample out of SRC number two. Is that correct? Uh, continue uh, as normal now. Okay. The SRC to which Alan Shepard referred a moment ago is also known as the Rocket Pilot. 
That's the container that they use to bring back the rocks from the moon. Lunar sample container, rock box. 